Welcome back to another episode of Boomer Bush and Home for NFL Draft Talk. I'm your host, Terry, and today we are talking about linebackers. Almost through round one evaluations. Uh, well, actually, I'm done, but getting the videos up. So almost done with round one. I'm excited. So linebackers. Um, so the one thing I'll say is that over the seven or so years I've been doing this, the one position that has changed the most drastically in that time is the linebacker. Um, linebackers, I would say, is probably my second home as a coach. Um, well, coming up as a coach, I was definitely D-line and um, linebacker became a close second to me. My mentor really taught me a lot about linebacker play. And I seen really high level linebackers that perform their simple things that uh, read their keys a, a certain way, that attack a certain way. And I uh, D-line them hard on, but linebackers is probably the second hardest on because I really know what I expect out of a linebacker. And over the last few years, I tell you, like I was giving harsh grades to linebackers and people that kind of ended up being effective in the league. And what I realized is that as the spread offense evolved, so did the defenses, and they really changed the type of players that play linebacker. Like, those guys are kind of gone, to be honest with you. They're, these are more like uh, bigger safeties that play linebacker now, and there isn't much play behind the line of scrimmage, unfortunately. Uh, like, you rarely see tackles for loss unless it's a blitz or a sack. And what has happened is, with spread offenses and all the misdirection in college, they make you play both ends of the field or both uh, halves of the field, I should say. You know, they'll pull two guards and have a receiver come out like a screen on the left side, but then the right side, it might be a quick, um, you know, one yard arrow route. And so now both sides of the field have to play their side and you can't really chase anything. And then they stretch it out. You know, it's not so much downhill. It's a lot of uh, lateral um, gameplay and zone and all that. And so what that has done is linebackers who used to go downhill and try to make a play and fill the gap now just kind of scrape over the top all the time. They don't try to come downhill. They just try to meet the running back um somewhere over the top so they don't break a big game. So in that way, linebackers play kind of like safety sometimes. Now, the high-level linebackers on the NFL, they still get tackles for loss. They play downhill. Bobby Wagner's one of the best people, and that's because I think the best linebackers still, even though you got to be quicker, you don't hesitate to pull the trigger and come downhill when you see your gap open or your assignment and you make that play. And so I miss those linebackers. This is a different day and age, but um, I've kind of evolved and adjusted my grade into these new age linebackers. But anyway, I don't want to take up too much time. We got a lot to get to. I do want to remind all the new fans that uh, the real grade section at the end, look at the NFL's team. Uh, the draft from three years ago and give it a grade. Today we're doing the New Orleans Saints, so that'll be at the end. Now let's jump into these linebackers. Number one, we got Tremaine Edmonds out of Vitek, 6'5", about 250. So this is somebody that's getting a lot of uh, buzz, 19 years old, graduating early, um, has been playing as a teenager in college, which is kind of remarkable, has played with his two brothers at Vitek, now, the thing about him is that he's a regular stack backer, and all these guys are stack backers, but he projects as a stack linebacker, but he has the length and the size to play outside and uh, the explosiveness to rush the passer. So a lot of interesting things uh, as a linebacker that people see in Edmonds. I, uh, like I said, I think he's going to be a stack backer on first and second down, then you can rush him off the edge on third down. He is. So here's the thing. And people probably heard me before. He's a fluid athlete. He's explosive, but he's got stiff hips. People think because you're fast, you're agile. That's not the case. He's fast downhill in the straight line, but he's not, you know, real great laterally. He has a little bit of stiffness in his hips, but he's still a pretty good athlete. So um, his closing speed is really fast and his ability to blitz, of course, is going to be top notch. I don't think he has the moves yet, but I do think he has the length and explosion to uh, really get coached into a great uh, blitzer off the edge and up the middle. 
as far as taking on blocks, he's, he's really big. He hasn't done a great job of technique wise, but people don't really move him that much because he's quick and he's a bigger guy. So I think on the next level, he's going to have to get better at taking on blocks. And as far as coverage, I think he can cover running backs, tight ends and uh, man coverage. He's got the lint to cover them up. He's got the straight line speed to stay with them. In zone, he's quick enough to get to wherever you you want him to get to. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to like about him. But real quick with linebackers, what I grade him on is change of direction, closing speed, run through, which is what I was kind of talking about. Uh, how well do they run through the gap? Do they tippy toe? Do they sit and wait or do they explode? Their motor, their tackling, and their play recognition. Uh, so Tremaine, I think he waits like most linebackers do, but when he does see it and explodes, he, he is very explosive and can be a missile, uh, coming through when he wants to. And I gave him a four and a half tackle. He's a real good tackler and a four and a half closing speed. Again, straight line speed, but I gave him a level three play recognition. I think he reads the backfield and the flow of the play, not so much reading, uh, the line and the guards and the keys. So next up, we got Rashawn Evans out of Alabama. So Rashawn's a senior, and you know he's been playing behind some of these better linebackers before. So this was his time to really shine. So I like uh, I like him as an athlete. He's got some stiffness to his hips, but I like him as an athlete. Uh, I really like him in zone. Back, uh, Bama typically does a good job training their linebackers where they don't sit there and stare at the quarterback. They look for the routes. They look for work. They don't just cover green grass. So I like that. Uh, they actually had him guard receivers in the slot at times. He got running back tight end. So his coverage ability is really intriguing. I think uh, he's got a lot more experience than most linebackers. So I really liked him in coverage. Um, as far as a run defender, I think uh, he, he can shed, he can dip under blocks, but he's got to get better at taking on blocks. He wasn't the best at it. Still a stout kid, you know, 6'3", 230, um, probably going to play around 240. Uh, I like him stout-wise, but he's got to be able to start getting off blocks. And then as a blitzer, I thought um, he was really good on the edge. He had a really surprising spin move that beat a lot of linemen. Uh, it was a really tight spin, too, for a linebacker, so I like that. Of course, he's explosive up the middle, and uh, so him as a blitz, I really like. Now, as far as his traits, um, I liked his closing speed. He was a level four. I liked his motor. He was a level four. Everything else was a three and a half, and again, I think uh, this is a guy that's kind of just now getting himself uh, comfortable in that position, Who who a guy who hasn't had too, too many starts. And so I think uh, he's going to only get better. Then we got Roquan Smith out of Georgia. So it, it's funny, a year where six one is one of the shorter linebackers. Usually that's super tall, but uh, he's one of the shorter linebackers this year. So six one two twenty five. 225, so he's slightly undersized. 225, you know, a linebacker, I think you want to be at least 230. Now we've seen smaller linebackers in this league. Like I said, they change the way they play. So people don't mind that, but for me, I want you to have a little more uh, strength to you, a little more muscle on you. Uh, but at 225, he's a great athlete. Very fluid, no hip stiffness. I think he moves around very well. I love everything about Roquan. He uh, won the buckets this year, and for good reason. He blitzes very well. He comes off the edge well uh, with a nice lean. He comes up the middle. If he's Double A gap blitzing is over. If they don't catch him, he's he's sacking the quarterback just like that. Uh, as far as coverage, I love him in coverage. I, I think um, he really moves well in zone. We didn't see him play a man a lot, but I think his zone coverage is really because he's so mobile and that he really can lock on to receivers once they get in his area. And if there's no one in his area, he can get to different zones. So um, as an athlete, he's just one of them side to sideline linebackers, but he's also got really good coverage skills too, and he can hit you. So he's got the all around game. I mean, I gave him a four and a half closing speed. I gave him four and a half motor, four and a half tackler. I, I love it. Uh, I gave him a four play recognition. I think he can get, he's really good. 
even though he reads the backfield, but I think he'd get even better once we get him reading the lineman keys. Uh, then we go to Malik Jefferson out of Texas. This was a tough one for me. He's very stiff to me. 6'3", 240, another big guy. Uh, fast. Yeah, I think he's fluid, but I mean, well, fast is relative. I, I think he's stiff though. Uh, he can move around, but his hips are stiff. Again, more of a straight line guy. And I know that he played a lot better the previous year. Uh, but you know, I, I, I take into account what you do this year. And so I, I seen him do a little bit in coverage that I like. Um, He's staring down the quarterback, not, you know, really looking for work like most linebackers. But I do think he can move well enough to play some short coverage. And I think he could probably play man coverage on running backs coming out of the backfield. Uh, as a blitzer, no moves, no speed, no nothing, no power. Just kind of ran into people and didn't go anywhere. So I didn't like him at, on blitzes. Uh, I liked his ability to take on blocks, though. He was stout. He got off a of block, so um, not the greatest, but he's definitely used to doing it. And, yeah, I mean, he just, uh, to me, is a really a- average athlete. This is a guy that if he goes to the combine and looks different than he did on tape, could really be a big boost for him. But as far as what I saw on tape, his closing speed, his change of direction, he's just not that explosive of, of an athlete. Then we got uh Leighton Vander S from Boise State, 6'4", 240. Love this kid. I love him. I love Roquan. Like this is this is one of those throwback linebackers. This is as close as you're gonna get. Um I like everything he really can do. I mean, I, I like his ability to take on blocks. Um I don't think he really uh dominated anybody but i liked his ability to take on blocks i think he knows how to use extension he knows how to use leverage i just want to see him get off blocks a little quicker now only thing about his game i really didn't like is his blitzing uh as as much as they blitzed him he didn't really do much as a blitzer in terms of moves or or pressure uh so i think Maybe he could get better there, but I love this coverage ability. One of those guys that constantly look for work, like I was talking about, and they use him in some weird, not weird, but different zones. Like he'll go from middle all the way to the sideline. Like he really crossed the field, dropping into some uh, deep zone coverages. So he showed a lot of athleticism. Um, and he has loose hips. These are, he's one of the athletes that has loose hips. You got guys that are stiff. Guys that are just de- like no stiffness and then guys that are loose and guys that can really change direction. So he, I gave him a four and a half change of direction, four and a half motor, four and a half tackler and a four run, <coughs> excuse me, a, four, a level four run through. And the only, the only thing that held him back is that level three closing speed. I don't know how fast he is in a straight line. And so really seeing him in a 40 is going to also help with him. But he is, I think, a gem. I think he's going to end up in the first round and be, uh, uh, if he doesn't, I think he'll be a still of a linebacker who can do a lot of different things. Then we got Josie Joel out of Iowa. Um, man, this is tough. A lot of people like him and I like him too. Uh, he's kind of a tweener to me. So he's 6'2, 236. He's a kind of a cross between a downhill thumper and you know, like an old school linebacker and a new school linebacker. He definitely played all the downs and was out there in coverage. But I don't know how good he is at it. I mean, he's quick for what his size and kind of what you think he would be able to do. He's got nice loose hips. He can change direction. But I don't think he has any straight line speed. And that that's one of the things that might hurt him as far as coverage. Uh, I didn't like him as a blitzer. thought he was average to below average. And I didn't like him taking blocks on. Um, that's, those are the two things. When, he, when he got blocked, he stayed blocked. Like he did not get off blocks well at all. And that's something that I absolutely can't get past with a linebacker. Now that is teachable and you can get better at it. So that's the good news, but he really was not good taking on blocks. Once he got covered, he was done. Um, I liked him rerouting receivers. I liked him in coverage. So, um, I like him as a downhill guy. He's got some upside to him. Um, I don't know. I, I just kind of worry about him, but I gave him a four, uh, change direction, four and a half motor, four tackle, 
and four run through. So some good traits on him. Think he'll be a solid mid round pick. Uh, then we got Micah Kaiser, one of the Virginia guys, 6'2, 240. He is a straight old school downhill thumper. Very stiff, not athletic, not very fast. Uh, I didn't like his change direction or his closing speed, but he will run through a gap and hit somebody. This is an old school Mike linebacker who probably cannot play third down, which is going to hurt him. Um, I think he's a lower round pick, to be honest. I mean, he seems like a really good kid, a uh, fiery guy that's a, that could uh, help spark the defense, but I don't see him doing much um, because of his limitations in coverage. Then we got Jerome Baker from Ohio State. Interesting cat. Guy that's kind of built like a safety uh, and kind of moves like a safety too. But the thing about Jerome is that even though he's on the smaller side, he probably gets off blocks better than anybody in this linebacker group, especially in space. When people come down uh, or come up to block him, it's darn near impossible. He is so good at avoiding blocks, getting underneath blocks. He's got good hands, too. He swats away blocks pretty well. And even a couple times when he blitzed up the middle, I saw him, like, real quick off the snap, destroy a lineman and get past him. So I love that. Even though he uh smaller, he, he's definitely good getting off blocks. Uh, good blitzer, explosive. I didn't think he had any particular uh, moves or strength, but he was uh, explosive, of course. And then I love his coverage ability. That's the thing that really is getting people excited. And they kind of call him a hybrid where he is pretty much like a, you can use him as a slot defender. So, or nickel defender, I should say. So you see people bring in another corner. Some people bring down an athletic safety, but this is a guy that could potentially as a linebacker cover people in the nickel. And that just opens up a whole world of what you can do as far as personnel and bringing people on the field. So really interested. I mean, he played man coverage on receivers almost all the time. Uh, he, he played Tampa two deep middle for zone at times. So a lot of coverage ability. This is kind of one of those coverage linebackers, except that. He gets off blocks, and he can come downhill and hit people. So I, there's a lot to like about Baker. I wonder about his size makeup um, and his lack of uh, time plan, the position. But I still really like a lot of the things that he brings to the table. Um, as a tackler, he's not the best. Like, again, he'll hit people, but as far as wrap-up tackling, I think he tackles too high. So I don't like that. His motor needs to improve. He gives up real quick. And like every other linebacker, his play recognition could be better. Then opposite him, you got Chris uh, Worley from Ohio State, 6'2", 230. So much more of a bigger guy, but definitely a chase linebacker. Average guy to me, uh, somewhat stiff, not great at blitzing, uh, average in coverage, didn't do much, Didn't couldn't cover a lot of grass, so... Uh, I don't think he could really cover any running backs or tight ends. So, again, a first and second down thumper type guy. But he's not really a downhill guy. I think he is a chase guy, but he doesn't have a lot of speed. So, uh, somebody that might be uh, a project or somebody that might be a special teamer. Then we got a lot of linebackers to go through. Uh, so... Another guy I watched was out of Indiana, uh, T. Gray Scales. Very tough, man. Very tough. Uh, he's a downhill thumper, six foot two thirty. He's stout. Uh, I think he could do pretty well getting off blocks. He got home a lot on his blitzing, but I don't think he's explosive of an athlete, but somehow he got home on those sacks. And so he's got a number of pass rush moves, but I don't think he's anything great. Uh, it might just been the coincidence, you know, of who he was on the blitz scheme, but he, he got home on those sacks. So that's something you gotta say about him. And then coverage is a wrap. He, he did not look good in coverage. He, I don't think he could cover anybody in man. This is probably a first and second down, uh, type linebacker. I like his run through a level four motor level four tackling level four. And I like his play recognition. This is kind of one of them. Classic old school linebackers that uh, probably will be a lower round pick and just kind of be uh, on the field first down, second down. 
Mike McCray out of Michigan, 6'4", 242. Interesting cat as well. Um, fluid athlete. I think he's got good hips. And that's the thing. He, he moves very well um, side to side, but I don't know if he has straight line speed. So if you watch him, he covers a lot of grass, but I don't know if he has straight line speed. Uh, average blitzer. Didn't do a lot in coverage. Uh, I think he's more suited for zone because of that athleticism. I don't think he can play man coverage. Uh, but as far as the run game, it's a big guy, uh, 6'4", 240, you know. He can take on blocks. He can definitely hold his own. But uh, I like his run through. He's forceful, and he can explode. A uh, guy that's really explosive when he comes downhill and sees a, a play to make. Uh, but kind of a mixed bag as far as his skills. Uh, but I like his change direction. I like his run through. I like his tackling. And this, if you're talking about like the third tier linebackers, I think he's higher up on that list. Then, uh, I believe lastly, I got Jason Cabinda from Penn State, 6'1, 234. Uh, very average player to me, to be honest with you. Um, you know what? Uh, stiff hips. Uh, average blitzer, didn't do a lot in coverage. Uh, I think he, you know, he's an average player really to be middle of the road. Uh, all his traits I graded him out was kind of middle of the road at a three or three and a half. Uh, veteran, uh, senior that, uh, kind of has a lot of experience though. Uh, and I think he'll be a good special teamer to be honest with you. And those are the guys I was able to grade out. I will say Jack Keechee, Cece, Cece from Wisconsin. I really liked the little bit of uh, tape I got to see for him, but um, I didn't get to see all of it. So I'm looking for round two to evaluate him, but I think uh, he might be an interesting pick too. Okay. So that's a lot of linebackers. Uh, <laughs> we got through that. Um, and I, man, I tell you, so many people. I got to pull up last year's draft to uh, remember exactly who was in it. But I will say overall, this class is a pretty decent class of linebackers. Uh, some very interesting players, like like seriously, Tremaine Edmonds and, um, and the size that he has is unprecedented. But you also do have guys like uh, Lander S. from B- Boise State, Malik Jefferson from Texas, where you got bigger guys this year, just overall linebackers that usually aren't that big. And so interested to see what they'll do. So, yeah, last year we had Ruben Foster, was kind of the guy, Jared Davis, Zach Cunningham, when we do nothing, Duke Riley, the LSU boys. Yeah, so much deeper group as far as frontline guys. And kind of the, you know, players from the same teams, but different breed. I think Ruben Foster, of course, was a lot better than Evans is. But Evans, you know, coming from that same system. And then Baker coming out of Ohio State with Worley. I mean, Baker's going to be interesting, man. I really am interested to see what they end up doing with him. If they'll play him as kind of a Swiss Army knife, maybe a hybrid linebacker safety. Uh, so I think you got some interesting options here. And then, of course, Roquan, Roquan Smith, who is the number one linebacker, hands down. Uh, the argument, though, is all the upside that Tremaine Evans ha- Edmonds has. And talking about him being 19 and talking about his size, a lot of people are going to have that debate. But, yeah, like I said, a guy on that second tier, like a um, Jefferson, like a Jewel, like a um, – like a Baker or a, a, a T. Gray or Mike McCray. You got a lot of different options kind of go down that depth. So uh, I like this group. I like this group. I don't think there's anybody that uh, blows your socks off, but a lot of people that could be NFL players. Okay. So with that said, let's go over to the real grade for the New Orleans Saints. 2015. So we got nine players. Number one, we got Andres Pete in the first round, who is still with the team, starting at guard. Um, you got number one, Stephon Anthony, who is now with the Dolphins, got traded. Uh, second round, we got Haloi Kikaha out of Washington, who is still with the team, rotating. Gary Grayson, who is cop from Colorado State, still with the team, back up the breeze. 
P.J. Williams, who is still with the team and now a starter. Davis Toll out of the league. You got Tyler Davidson, who is a starter for the last few years. You got Damian Swan, who's out of the league, and Marcus Murray or Murphy, who is still in the league but with another team. So, out of that, we got nine players. We got two that are out of the league. The two that are out of the league were both in the fifth round. So, it doesn't hurt you too bad. Um, and then we got our first round pick or one of our first round picks at number 31, who is no longer with the team. So it's tricky. Now they traded him. So they made the decision. So now the question is, okay, you traded him. Um, is, was it cause he wasn't good or y'all wasn't mesh or uh, meshing together? And so Stefan, I actually don't know. Uh, actually, let me check here. I'm not sure if he started or not with the Dolphins. They didn't have a lot of linebackers, so I imagine he did. Uh, no, he didn't start any games with the Dolphins. So, but I guess he played a little bit. So he didn't start for the Dolphins. So now you start asking the question, how good of a player was he? Now, the thing with Anthony is that he had a great rookie year. And this is why I tell people, wait three years. This is why we do this. Great rookie year. Oh, he's this, he's this type of like, he's this and that, he's this and that. Great pick. And then the next year he falls off, gets in trouble with the coaches, and then he gets traded. So that's why you got to cool your jets. You can't make decisions right away. And so trading away your first round pick for a fifth round pick is all they got in exchange. That does hurt, especially because you didn't get much value back. Um, but uh, everybody else is still with the team except Marcus Murray, or Murphy, I keep saying that, Marcus Murphy, who was a seven-round pick, so that's not a big deal. Uh, so, we look at this, like I said, uh, the thing you want to look at is our starter. So, Andres Pete is a starter. May not be the franchise tackle, we thought, but he's a starter. Haloi Kikaha, he's a rotational guy, but he's got four sacks the two years he plays, so... I think he's healthy now. I mean, I would, he's rotational, but I would, you know, I say he contributes at a starter level. PJ Williams, uh, after a couple, uh, injuries and bad years, comes out as a starter. I don't know if he'll be next year, but he was a starter. Then you got Garrett Grayson, who, uh, and people try to say that's a bust and they need a quarterback. It's not his fault Breeze didn't get hurt, so we haven't had to see him. That's not that's not a knock on you. So I never understand people keep saying they need a replacement for Breeze, and we haven't even seen Garrett play. So having a backup quarterback, I think is good. We don't know how good he is, but he's still with the team. And then the biggest thing you got is a fifth round pick, who has been an unquestioned starter for two years for you, and Tyler Davidson. So those are huge points right there. And again, you don't have any stars out of this group. But you retained most of them. Uh, the first round pick does hurt. So it's always tough with these. But I, I would say you hit on uh, one, two, three, four players. And one was a huge hit in the fifth round. Four out of nine. That's a pretty good hit rate. So I'm going to give this uh, draft class a B. Okay. So that is it for the show. Pretty long. I know. But, hey, we got through it. So, definitely go to the comments section. Let me know what you think of this group of linebackers. I know I talked about the Bears and Tremaine Edmonds already. But uh, the other linebackers that you guys like or that you think will um, be surprising hits or any of that good stuff. And then go to the comments section. Start that conversation. Like it. Thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. Share it around so we get the conversation going. And thank you for listening.